Hello grandchildren, I got chapstick at the store and I accidentally got green apple flavored. And I taste delicious. Mm. Now this really isn't that important, but I figure it's probably a good distraction from the fact that I haven't made a journal entry in like three months. I understand if you want to shun me from your lives. Or life. I don't know how many grandchildren I have, but I'm assuming that it's... 20? Is that too many grandchildren? So I've been gone for three months. Uh, and I am pretty much just going to use this video to tell you what has been happening for three months and why I haven't made any videos. The short and simple version is that I haven't had any time because I've been working a lot. At that time, and I think I told you guys about it, uh, I was working uh, both jobs, uh, the KRCR, uh, Promotions Producing, and then I was also um, a shift leader at Valley 11, the movie theater. And that ended up being a lot of work just because the movie theater gets very, very, very busy during the summer and during Christmas. And back in November, I went up to go visit uh, my friend Logan, and we were talking a lot, and I was kind of debating whether or not I should quit the movie theater as a job, and I was talking to him about it, and he gave some really good life advice, and pretty much it ended with me deciding that I was going to quit the movie theater job at some point. I felt guilty about the idea of quitting the movie theater before Christmas just because that's when it gets really, really, really busy and I am the most senior uh, non-manager staff member or uh, at the movie theater. So me leaving would make things a lot more difficult for them because I am one of the few employees that are not managers that work there that know where like everything is in the building, that knows the building inside out, knows how to handle the customers uh, in the worst situations that they ever show up in. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to. So I'm um, continuing to work 30 hours a week at KRCR and then starting to approach uh, somewhere anywhere between 25 and 35 hours a week at the movie theater, depending on the week. Uh, I was definitely hitting uh, regularly 60 hours a week, which is more than a lot of full-time uh, uh, employees at businesses usually work. Uh, but it was split up between the two jobs, and both of them needed me for a lot of things. And then you might get frustrated at me for making this decision, but uh, I, I say yes to too many things. And... My manager at KRCR found out that I used to program uh, when I was a little bit younger and I was really, really into it, but I, I haven't done it in a really long time. But he asked me if I could help out with this little thing that they were trying to figure out at uh, the news station. And I said, sure. So I was introduced to this god awful database to manage current clients at the news station. Pretty much they needed a system to organize all of the people who wanted commercials made because uh, there's two commercial producers at the station. I'm a promotions producer, so I make like ads for the new station, but then there's these people who make ads for people who want their ads on the new station. If that makes sense. So there's two guys and at any given point in time, there's like 30 or 40 active commercial projects and they take like uh, anywhere from uh, two weeks to like two or three months. So when you have each person trying to handle 20 projects um, with clients that want their commercial made and on time and everything, you have to figure out a way to manage that. And they had uh, a very rough database that tried to keep track of it. It was really just a glorified Excel spreadsheet. Um, and they were trying to convert it into a database and had a form that they had to have someone manually enter everything into this. Like there was like 20 different uh, columns in this uh, spreadsheet. The lady that works at the front desk to uh, let people into the door, I think she was the one that had to manually enter in all, all this stuff. And then they had this like web form, but it just sent this, it was, it was a mess. And they were trying to get it to work into a database, but uh, one of the guys there, Chris, uh, he hasn't programmed before and he's learning how and he uh, was still having a little bit of a rough time getting everything there just because he was like learning at the same time he was trying to pull off the project which is understandable uh, he it was 
he didn't know and he was trying to figure it out in order to do it. So I stepped in and I tried to help them figure out their shit. Now, of course, because I... I feel like I'm generally a perfectionist, and by that I mean I hate everything I do, and I think that it could be better. So I made them a a better version of what they were doing, but then I decided that it could be better even more so. So then I started programming even more, and it got to the point where I had such an intense program that did more than what they were asking me to do, that my boss said that I could probably actually sell this software to other businesses uh, and make money for myself off of that. Um, and I thought that that was a cool deal. I could write the software that uh, the news station KRCR would kind of be my free beta testers. And once I knew that it was working really well and I had real world proof that it was an effective piece of software, uh, I could then sell it to other businesses and say that there is a business that is using it regularly for a lot of stuff. So uh, the end result of that is that I was, in addition to working at the news station and at the movie theater, I was working in addition probably like 10 to 15 hours a week uh, programming. Not being paid, but still working. And a lot of it I was doing at KRCR, like just after hours, off the clock. So there was a point where I was probably working 70 to 80 hours a week, which is god awful, and I felt emotionally dead for the duration of that three months. And that's in addition to the regular stress of having to work in the movie theater and deal with god-awful amounts of angry people who... I don't know why they decide to go to the movies if the family is that upset, because the movie theater is supposed to be a fun place where you enjoy pieces of cinematic excellence or cinematic shit and laugh at it. Uh, but you... I, why would you be sad there? It's like someone being sad at Disneyland. And maybe I'm biased just because I really, really love movies. Uh, and maybe not everybody views the movie theater as such a magical portal to different worlds, but it's still frustrating when there's all these angry people coming in. Especially, it's like, I'm, I think anywhere during, in the service industry, if people aren't happy coming in, you're not going to be happy as an employee because you, people like being around happy people. So I was pretty much for three months getting no sleep and working all of my awake hours and on a day-to-day -day basis really my my plan was um when my alarm goes off i get up and go to whatever work i needed to go to that day and it, i went to that work and then i might have another alarm that said i had to go to a different work which is awful when you have to go spend eight hours at one work and then you get off and you're finally like ready to take a break and then you look at your phone and it says that you also have to spend another eight hours at another place. So all day would be wake up, go to work, go to other work, try to find a time somewhere in there to eat something, usually one, one meal a day with my schedule, uh, and then go home and sleep. So I was working way too much and not having any time for um, rest or seeing friends or my girlfriend and life was just awful. I was really happy about uh, Logan. Logan pointed this thing out to me and I think I told you guys before about how much I loved the book The Alchemist. Um, it's one of my favorite books that I've ever read and I think it changed how I view a lot of things in life. But uh, Logan pointed out to me, and it made me feel a little bit better, there's this one part of The Alchemist where uh, the boy, like the main character, he's working in this, uh, this it's like a crystal shop, and he, he was trying to find something, and, and that was going to be in Egypt, but he didn't have the money to go to Egypt. So he was working in this crystal shop for like a year, trying to save up the money so that he could do that. And that was a similar motivation to me doing all of the work that I was doing for those three months. Uh, I I mean, it, like I, I don't think I would have chosen to, to be working 70 to 80 hours a week uh, just on like... A whim, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have volunteered to do that much work uh, because it just destroys you, like on a soulful level. It was more of the idea that uh, I mean, for pretty much for the past two years, most of my paychecks have been going towards film equipment, stuff that I needed to to pursue my dream and uh, a future career and everything, because uh, you can't just. I mean, you could make a movie without any equipment. I think that's possible. 
but it's a lot more difficult and a lot more time consuming and you, there's a lot of stuff you can't do without a baseline of equipment. Just because th in film there's things like lighting and audio uh, that are so important to the aesthetic of uh, whatever you're trying to do and you can manipulate those things to make something look the way you want. And if you just pull out a cell phone and try to record a movie in the room as it is, generally it's going to look awful uh, unless you're just a genius, which I am not. Uh, it's Most of the time it's not gonna look that great. Uh, so I've spent, I've been spending all this time trying to get better lights, better, um, better lights, better camera equipment, and I, I feel like I've, I've been getting there. Uh, and that's one of the biggest benefits from working that much was I, I was working 80 hours a week and I didn't have time to spend any of the money. So I made uh, quite a bit of money. I'm not like rich or anything, but uh, I mean, it's, it's all minimum wage work. And then the 10, 15 hours of that was, I wasn't really getting paid, but hopefully maybe in the future I might get paid. But the, the point is, I, I don't regret doing all of that work, regardless of how soul-crushing and or depressing and negatively it impacted me, uh, everything was. Like, I just, uh, just like in The Alchemist, how he spent all that time working. It, in the book, it was a necessity if he wanted to pursue his dreams to spend that year away from his dreams working because he knew that once he got the money he could actually go after what he was seeking and in a way that entire time that he was working he was still seeking out his dream he, like he was every single dollar that he earned at this crystal shop was one step closer to Egypt even if it's you know figuratively rather than literally every single step. And that I think that's my justification for working so much over the past couple of months is that it's it's still working towards my hopeful future as a filmmaker uh, because I am making money to get equipment that I view necessary to pursue my dreams. And I think honestly, based off of the work that I've done recently, I have almost all of the equipment that I need in order to make start making some really good uh, pieces of film. I mean, my skill level still needs to improve quite a bit, but uh, as far as the technical side of things, I think I'm, I'm pretty well covered. And if I wanted to right now, I think I can make a pretty good uh, indie movie, which is which is fantastic because I'm about to be going to film school and uh, I ended up resigning from my job at the movie theater and I am now still working KRC or 30 hours a week, but I get Tuesdays and the weekends off. And I'm gonna be spending as much time as I can before I go to film school trying to make as many pieces of film that I possibly can so that my skill level when I go into film school will be at a higher level than it is right now. And hopefully I'll get more out of film school going in at a more advanced level because uh, I'll have the chance to ask more advanced questions to these uh, masters of the craft that I'm supposed to be learning from. And I feel like a little part of me is dying because I haven't done that many adventure things recently and that is a pretty big part of my life and I need to get out and go and climb something or break onto somebody's property and uh, maybe put my life slightly in risk because sometimes you're more alive during those moments than any other point in your life. And I'm gonna be seeing Logan and Brian again really soon and I haven't seen them in way too long and hopefully we'll be able to do a little bit of that. We're planning on, uh, I guess, during spring break going, I think they wanted to go to the Grand Canyon, which is crazy, like a little road trip to the Grand Canyon and back. I don't know, we'll figure it out. I have no freaking clue what the future holds at the moment. Another interesting thing that I think I forgot to tell you guys is that I started reading audiobooks and they're fantastic. I, mean, I don't remember if, did I tell you about I was reading audiobooks? Because I started reading audiobooks. There might have been an episode right at the end, right before I stopped making uh, videos during my little hiatus. I started reading audiobooks and they're fantastic. And I read Paper Towns, which was a, I thought that was a pretty good book. And then uh, I read, I, I've never read Harry Potter before. So 
I got the audiobooks one through seven and I because of the amount of time that I've spent working, there's a lot of time driving between jobs and home and everything. So I've spent like there was a period where I was spending like at least half an hour a day in my car and I can connect my phone to my car. So I started playing audiobooks instead of listening to music or talk radio, which was starting to drive me crazy just because of the whole election thing coming up and the doc radio I, I wasn't really agreeing with a lot of it it's just really frustrating but audiobooks are incredibly relaxing compared to that um and i read all the harry potter books now um i'm on the, except the last two i just started with the sixth i've got a chapter four and they're incredible pieces of literature that uh you guys should read even if it's in the future i feel like they're like i mean it doesn't seem that old timey um, I mean, also read The Alchemist, but uh, if you have time, read Harry Potter, because they're really good books. I mean, you might not like them at all. And if you don't like them, talk to me. I'll punch you in the face. Is that is that legal for a grandparent to punch their kid in the face? We're going to find out. So to end the story of what's happened in the past... Oh, I forgot! Wow, could I forget that? My uh, sort of stepsister, Rachel... She got married to this guy named Brandon Ledbetter, and he, uh, um, mm, I, he's a good guy, and I, I worked with him for a little bit at the movie theater, and we became pretty good friends, and they were dating uh, already before he worked in the movie theater, so it wasn't weird. I went into that friendship knowing that he was dating Rachel. But, uh, yeah, they ended up uh, getting married, and it, right before he went off into the military, they got married, and uh, he's a really great guy, and I, I, uh, they asked me to film and photograph their wedding, which, uh, why would anyone trust me with that obligation that, like, has so much pressure with that? I mean, sometimes I think that people think that I'm better at some things than I am. All the time, actually, I think that. I wouldn't consider myself good. Why would they ask me to... It's their wedding. That's, like, one of the most important days of their lives, and I'm responsible for capturing that in a way that they can look back on it and think that uh, I did a good job and that it's an accurate portrayal of that day and all of the feelings that they had. That's... It's so much pressure, and it was one of the most stressful shooting experiences of my life just because of... I... I was filming Rachel getting ready at, uh, at uh, her house, and then I was following their limo to the, the place where the wedding was happening, and apparently the wedding was going to start immediately once they got there, and I didn't know that. I figured I'd have, you know, maybe half an hour to get ready, so I was carrying all my equipment in, and then the music started playing, and that meant that the wedding actually was going to start, and I don't know how weddings work, but they just immediately started with the, the ceremony and the walking the, up the aisle, and I hadn't had all any of my equipment ready, so I was panicking, and I just turned on one of my cameras, and I think I walked in front of it a couple times, and it was just awful and if you ever see this Rachel I am so sorry uh, that was I didn't turn out awful I guess but uh, it could have been better I if I knew how weddings worked but I, I ended up uh, after I, I managed to get through the ceremony and get as much footage as I can it wasn't the best that I think it could have been again because I was panicking the entire time trying to put together my equipment because I didn't think it was going to happen that quickly. Uh, but I I did it and I took a bunch of pictures and I made a wedding video and I gave it to them and they seemed happy with it. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, and I'm, I was super super happy for Rachel and Brandon because I I think they they work together really well, and they're a good couple, and I think, I, I hope that they're going to have a really good, long marriage. Again, I'm sorry for not making any journal entries for the past three months. I know I told you guys that I would do once a week no matter what, but I'm a liar, I guess. Life got in the way. Excuses don't matter. I'm a bad person, probably. But yeah, that's, that's what happened in my life the past three months and hopefully I'll start making videos uh, hopefully I'll start making journal entries regularly again and if you guys see me anytime in the near future
we should uh, we should play Scrabble. But what if you guys you guys probably know more words than me? I feel like education is just gonna get better. So what if you guys are really, really, really smart? What if you guys are way smarter than anyone alive right now? You probably will be because I feel like as time goes on. Uh, the humanity develops more efficient and effective ways of teaching and maybe we're going to change the school system to a way that's not as sketchy as it is right now uh, and maybe you know, hopefully you guys are filled with more knowledge than I am uh, but maybe I, I really don't know because I'm assuming that as humanity gets better at learning and teaching, I'll probably still be trying to keep up to date on knowledge that's happening. I keep going off on these tangents. Just well, We should just play some goddamn Scrabble and see who's better, me or you. Uh, I mean, I probably have an unfair advantage just because I'll be like 60 or 70 when you guys actually end up watching this and request to play Scrabble with me. So I have all of that behind me. But then you guys might have the more effective teaching and uh, knowledge behind you so this will be interesting and i give you guys permission to to curse when i beat you am i a bad influence as a future grandfather if i'm telling my grandkids to curse probably anyway grandchildren i'll see you guys in the next journal entry